Hi everyone, I'm Holly from Protocol 80 and I'm here today with Donnie and we're going to be talking about some different trade show strategies that can really help you um, maximize your booth traffic um, as well as capitalize on follow-up and some CRM management and things like that. Um, so we're really excited. Actually, Donnie just spoke on um, trade shows and trade show strategy at the Manufacturing Marketing World Conference. Yeah, that was an awesome time. Great group of people there um, really kind of touched on how do you stand out at trade shows? Mm -hmm. um, how do you kind of cut through the noise while you're there, but also get get out ahead of the show um, mm -hmm. with your planning and implementation of your strategy so that you know, you've know you got a bunch of appointments booked uh, and then that you do some kick-ass follow-up afterwards. Absolutely, because we're all about increasing ROI. That's like our number one goal here. Is sure. We're going to try to give you some tips in this video that will help you walk away feeling much more satisfied about the results of your show. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's start by talking about actually getting people to your booth, <laughs> which is like half the battle. Sure, yeah. So uh, most of the time people struggle with time, period. Like mm -hmm. there's just not enough time to do a bunch of planning ahead and um, get out in front of the show and do promotions, whether right. that's through social, email, or however you choose. So, um, But it's really one of the most important aspects because you want to go into the show already having as many appointments booked for, you know, big fish that you could be meeting mm -hmm. with there or, you know, lost opportunities as possible. So uh, one area that I highly encourage people to get involved with is social media mm -hmm. um, and digging into not just like this upcoming show, but what went on in social last year mm -hmm. that we can maybe capitalize on and start the conversation up again uh, in the social channels. And um, most of the time uh, that involves doing some digging into like the hashtag mm -hmm. for the show. Um, so you can you can look up what last year's show was, hashtag, you know, Fabtech 18 or 19, depending on, you know, when you're researching and kind of look in to see who were the players that were involved in social and uh, how can I start up some of those those topics yeah. or, or ask some questions to get some conversations started? Yeah, absolutely. And I think something with that, too, is researching this year's hashtag, like seeing if your leads and your prospects are already conversing about that, because then all you have to do is send them a quick DM and say, hey, we're going to be there as well. Let's set something up. Right. It's an, it's an easy way to, and I like it because it's an easy way to kind of cut through the noise because there's not right. a ton of manufacturers or companies that are being highly involved with the, the um, hashtag before the show. So mm -hmm. you have an opportunity to kind of stand out, especially in a manufacturing industry. Absolutely. Absolutely. So social is one great way. Um, but then email is kind of the traditional way. Do we have any tips to leverage other than just sending the, hey, I'm going to be here type email? Yeah, I think it's important to do some real creative brainstorming there mm -hmm. because um, they're going to get tons of emails that are like, hey, we're booth number 6543, come check Absolutely. us out. And so you're one of probably 100 emails they're getting that say the exact same thing. So mm -hmm. how can you creatively um, get them to at least open it, which mm -hmm. half the battle is the subject line, obviously, right. <laughs> standing out there. Right. Um, so, you know, we've got a... You've put together an awesome guide yeah. on email marketing for trade shows, so I'll let you talk about that a little bit. Yeah, we'll link that below. Um, so basically what we put together was some templates that can be copied and pasted, obviously worked a little bit to customize for your business and for your industry. But yeah, basically just copy and pasting those to kind of, like you said, cut through the noise and stand out. And something we also recommend is um, making good use of your list. So rather just sending to every single person you've ever met the same email, maybe segmenting based on the contacts from last year. So you know you met a certain amount of leads leads at last year's show, um, you, you know, throwing them in an email and saying, hey, it was great to talk to you last year. Will you be there this year? That kind of thing versus maybe with customers. That's a great face to face time that your salespeople can have if they're also attending. So just kind of segmenting and um, tweaking that conversation a little based on who you're sending to. Yeah, that, that's a good point. And I think that it's worth having a like top 10 list in your mm -hmm. in your database of people that you're not even going to kind of mass email or segment. You're going to one to one and say, you know, hey, last last year we we talked for five minutes, you mm -hmm. know, and it seemed like there might be a fit. You mentioned your son was in like the little league yeah, series right. or something. How's he doing? You know, just establish a personal connection if you can, mm -hmm. but determine who those top priority uh, prospects are and, right. and have a salesperson actually one to one email them. Right, because you can't do that for everyone. That would be a little bit unrealistic. Right. right. So I think that kind of brings us to talk about a CRM. Before we talk about actually being at the show and um, following up after the show, uh, some people out there might be thinking, okay, that's great, but how am I supposed to remember that Susie has a dog named Harold right. and, and whatnot? So what do you recommend? Yeah, um, you know, we always say a spreadsheet is not a CRM. Right. And, and um, you're going to have, if, if you're relying on spreadsheets, you know, your information is always going to be old and... Um, you, you don't kind of have a good central source of truth that all of your salespeople can, right. can operate off of. So 
So yeah, the CRM uh, is a great place to capture notes um, and uh, just attributes of particular prospects so that, uh, let's say, next year, sales, the salesperson that was trying to work this prospect is no longer on the team. Mm -hmm. Someone can still go back to this database. It's not buried in somebody's email inbox somewhere. It's in the CRM where they can reference all the notes about that right. prospect and be able to kind of pick up the conversation again. So it's just super important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this is going a little bit, um, during the show and a little bit of pre-show as well. Sorry, skipping around a bit nice. here, cool. but, um, we've leveraged blogs in the past and seen some success with that, um, as kind of a aspect of all around trade show. So initially kind of the idea of a blog before either a blog for first timers. So something that's like a first timers guide to fab tech, it's a huge. So, so maybe you picked up some tips, you write something like that. And then when you're sharing on social media, you're being helpful instead of just saying, Hey, my booth will be here. Like, Hey, we're going to be there over right. and over again. That can start to get tired or even chiming in. If there's a panel that's talking about something that's major in your industry that your company works on sharing information about that from like the theme of the panel itself, right. um, giving your engineers own spin on it and things like that, that you can actually share. Yeah, that's a great idea. And, you know, everybody, you, you start with Google for just about every other thing that you're researching. And so if you're going to a conference for the first time, it's pretty common to hop in Google and Absolutely. search, you know, surviving XYZ conference or trade show or whatever. Right. Um, you know, touching back on social a little mm -hmm. bit, that if you can look at last year's conversations, the topics that really were popular in social channels, the discussion that was like pretty active, you can usually take a topic like that and expand upon it on your own blog right. as well, tying it back to the conference. It's good content that'll rank well for potential prospects, but I think you touched on um, briefly, it's also a good source of information. Like your blog can become a good source of information for sharing in social mm -hmm. and distributing through email to your, your prospects. Mm -hmm. It's very specific to the show. You know, it's going to boost engagement and potential interest in your booth. So even leveraging blogs as a follow-up as well. So kind of for the same reason, then joining those conversation, maybe you saw something that was an FAQ that was talked about beforehand and then talked about at the show on social and you write a blog about it. You can send that out. You can send it to leads when you're following up with them via email as like mm -hmm. a resource instead of just like trying to get them on the phone the whole time? Or what would you have added to this takeaway blog? Just kind of right. having a friendly conversation like that as well. Yeah, if, we, if you can, I'm a big fan of any time you can take those uh, disparate channels and kind of streamline the message and make them work harder. You know, right. get, get the blog to to help your social function, help your email function. Right. You know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of kind of reducing work by doing yeah, it that way. Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, so speaking of follow-up, we obviously think of follow-up as one of the main avenues for that being email. Mm -hmm. Um, so what are our kind of key tips for follow-up email? Sure. So keep it very, very human. Mm -hmm. um, and Definitely. and especially when you're first coming back from uh, the show, like everybody's overwhelmed. You were just gone for a week. You've mm -hmm. got a mountain on your plate from when you were gone. Plus you've got follow-up and you're dealing with, you know, uh, other fires that you might have missed. Mm -hmm. So um, one of my favorite things to do is just send a quick email just to, as a, hey, it was nice meeting you. I'll catch up with you again maybe next week when I know, you know, mm -hmm. the floodwaters have dispersed mm -hmm. a little bit. Right. Like I'm busy. Read. You're busy. We're both human. Just right. want to let you know I'm thinking right. of you type of thing. Right. Maybe less romantic. Yeah. yeah. Or, or just as romantic, <laughs> depending, depending on your industry. Really. Right. Yeah. yeah so uh, another uh, thing that I think works well is relying on humor. You right. Know, everybody feels like they got hit by a train. So use that, you know, and run with it. Absolutely. Um, the other thing is setting up uh, the person that you were, let's say you're, you're speaking to a prospect and they're not the decision maker. Mm -hmm. They know you'd be a good fit to work together, but they have to convince uh, a boss. I think a great um, next email, maybe after that initial one is arming them with the information they need to go to a stakeholder mm -hmm. and kind of convince them of at least looking into it as a possible solution. So th there's a ton of value you can add after the fact, um, but you want to kind of cut through the noise. So if you had a good personal conversation or something, reference it, be, you know, try and stand out and, right. and keep that connection going. Absolutely. Um, so something we, we talk about too is you don't want to just follow up with email and just follow up with sales pitch. You want to kind of send those emails, monitor the data you're getting from the emails, and then tweak accordingly. So for example, if you're starting with something like sending your first touch point, you're sending over resources like Donnie mentioned, maybe you're sending over a blog, your FAQ page, something like that. Start to monitor that and see if that person's clicked. How many times have they opened the email? Have they interacted in it? 
with it in some way other than just a standard response. And then kind of tailor your follow-up from there. If you know they're already interested in hanging out, maybe you that's when you pick up the phone and call and just skip your next emails. Or that's when you connect on LinkedIn and present yourself in another unique way. Because if you're just following up on email over and over again, maybe save that for leads that you're not sure are the best. You're not sure if they're continually interested and kind of customize based on what you're seeing from the emails. No, that's a, that's an excellent point. And it actually kind of uh, touches back on the CRM and the importance of mm -hmm. the CRM. So depending on what system you're using, you know, you're going to be able to see that data very clearly. You know, mm -hmm. um, if 5% of them are really engaging with uh, one of the emails that you sent, take that 5%, like you said, and be proactive and reach out by phone mm -hmm. or um, connect with other people at their company that are in similar roles and just do what you can to, to move the ball down the field, so to speak. Absolutely. And I think to your point from earlier too, at that point, if you've already automated your first one, you've done something you already know is helpful, it's already sending out you're catching up, that buys you you know, a week or two to really start to monitor that data and aggregate it and make your next spec choices because you've already, you've already touched base with them. Yep. So then you can kind of really be savvy about your decisions from there because you're not just like, oh, I need to pick up the phone. I need to do this. I need to do this because you've already kind of made good choices to get the ball rolling. Right. And ideally, you've planned your follow-up out before the show mm -hmm. even happened, which is a lot of times doesn't happen. You don't right. have that luxury of time. But to be able to say, when I come back, this is the, you know, have the the draft all ready to roll or, yeah. or set up sequences or something in your yep. marketing automation system so that uh, you're really just entering the contacts in and saying go. And right. Then, and, and hopefully you can automate most of that. Absolutely. Um, and one of the things too is we do have templates created for follow-up. So if you're thinking like this seems like a giant burden because I don't know exactly even where to begin. We don't send follow-up emails right now. We'll link those in the description as well. That's another good place for you to check out. Um, and something we kind of talked about the other day, which I thought was cool, was a way to focus on developing an idea that can kind of do more for your team and help out in, in more than one way, whether that's like a giveaway mm -hmm. that you can really focus on promoting before the show, have something exciting during, and then touch on during follow-up. So I know that you've yeah, talked yeah. a lot about making that exciting. Yeah, sure. So it, it's an awesome way on social to get some conversations started. Hey, we're doing a Hawaiian vacation giveaway. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing that big giveaway, it gives you something to reach out to prospects uh, with that is not a sales pitch. You mm -hmm. know? So uh, enter our, you want to enter our drawing before the show, you know, um, mention us at mention us mm -hmm. or click through and, and register on our site. So yeah. then not only does that get them somewhat engaged with you before the show, but you probably are generating leads along the way too. Absolutely, yeah. You can do some due diligence on those folks that are pre-registering for your, your giveaway and see if some of them make sense to DM, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. or email directly and say, hey, we might be a fit, let's connect. Yeah. Um, and then obviously it can be a big part of your booth while you're at the show. Mm -hmm. um, you can theme your whole booth and what people are wearing and everything mm -hmm. around the giveaway if that's um, something you're comfortable doing, which I hope most people would be because it does help you stand out. Mm -hmm. And then obviously after the fact it gives you a reason to follow up with them and say you know here's the winning or here's the winner of our, our drawing for the Hawaiian vacation maybe you did it on the last day of the show and you've got some pictures and things mm -hmm. that you can share with everyone um, it, yeah it's it's good because it creates a connection point throughout um, before during and after the mm -hmm. show that is not just strictly about trying to sell to them so, Absolutely. So it's something that's that's interesting and worth opening if you're on the other end. Yeah. And my devil's advocate cynical side always says, okay, but that's expensive. But I think the real benefit that it goes along with that is rather than trying to think of dedicated strategies outside the box for, you know, attracting people to the show, it's already kind of baked in, right? If you have something Hawaiian, you've got interesting subject lines, you've got, mm -hmm. you know, a way to stand out on social, and then you have something during and something after. So you're almost saving on like your team's bandwidth to brainstorm three different strategies now, because right. you're kind of oscillating around this one really cool idea. Yeah. And and the biggest challenge that most companies face, whether you're a manufacturer or in another industry, is time. So mm -hmm. doing that pre-planning is really difficult when you're trying to be like super genius, Steve Jobs level, Apple right. creative <laughs> right. with your you know pre-trade show um, promotion during the show and after the show. Mm -hmm. So you can invest in something like a Hawaiian giveaway, which you know, what from what I have, having worked with manufacturers for a long time, even that Hawaiian giveaway is not really that much money relative to even the first year of business with a potential prospect that you got because right. you got the attention for having it. So right. it's just a drop in the bucket. And, right. You know, and then if you consider lifetime value of a new customer, it's like not even close. Absolutely. Well worth it, well Absolutely. Worth it. And especially thinking about too, then you're starting to stand out. It, it just, um, uh, what's that word for when your returns maximize year after year? 
compounding? Yes. Your, yes. <laughs> your investment compounds as, sorry guys, I'm the writer on the team, not the math <laughs> person. So the fact I even knew that that was a math thing was impressive. Yeah. But um, so your returns kind of compound too, because so now you've stood out. And so maybe these leads didn't win this year, but you can reach out ahead of next year and be like, hey, you're going to try again in our giveaway, you know, that kind of thing. Right. And then also now all of a sudden you have the reputation of like the Hawaiian vacation giveaway people. So right. then that opens the door to like hosting parties that are Hawaiian themed while you're there to get more leads to your booth. So it's really is something that like, yes, upfront investment, it's it's uh, more substantial than, you know, stress balls, but down the line, it could really, really pay off. Yeah. And you, you touched on something else that I think is really important during the show. Um, if you can do something like throw a party mm -hmm. uh, at a kind of a popular place or a place that people tend to want to go when they're at that, maybe a brewery or some tourist attraction, mm -hmm. you definitely should do it. Um, it. It's a couple hours where you can invite prospects in and just kind of BS with them, get to know them on yeah. a personal level um, and and get a bunch of leads in a room at once. It's really hard to do that when you're at a trade show because attention is drawn mm -hmm. everywhere. So if you can get them, pull them into a party or something, mm -hmm. uh, definitely worth doing it. I recommend doing a lot of research though ahead mm -hmm. of time because the last thing you want to do is book your party like the same night as one of the big fish right. <laughs> you know, that they're having their party or right. the conference itself. Um, you, but you could piggyback off of that, mm -hmm. though. Um, so if, you know, General Electric is having a party from 6 to 8, maybe you have an after party from 8 to 10 mm -hmm. or something right next door so that mm -hmm. you can kind of get a migration of people. But it's an awesome way to get a whole bunch of leads in a room. Um, and, and maybe you just require them to give a business card or something mm -hmm. so that you have at least a lead, a contact of some sort. Uh, Absolutely. And it's also a great way to follow up. So mm -hmm. if you take a bunch of photos of the event and things like that, send them and post right. show, you know, right. follow up. Remember last week, I bet you'd rather be here than, you know, back at your desk. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so we talked about a little bit before gathering your contacts um, in a CRM and not in a spreadsheet and um, things like that. And one of the other values to that is geographic targeting. So both ahead of the show saying, hey, I know that all of these leads are in Tennessee and the show's in Tennessee, so I'm going to follow up on them differently. Mm -hmm. That's another great way to segment. And then also for follow-up as well to say, you know, hey, uh, this salesperson is in your territory. I'm going to put you in touch with them. Just helps take away the friction. Um, what are the other amazing reasons for a CRM and what makes you, you know, want to kick people who aren't currently using a CRM at trade shows? Sure, yeah. Um, I think the biggest, I'll touch on a pain point of okay. not having the CRM. Of course. Um, it's that you have contacts in your uh, contact database in Outlook or Gmail or whatever you're using. Mm -hmm. I have my own. Um, and at some point, I might leave or you might leave and we've got stranded contacts. And we don't know if I followed up with them, if you followed mm -hmm. up with them. Um, same thing applies if they're just in a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times that, that spreadsheet ends up on a shared drive on your network and you know you look at it a few times after the show, maybe do some really specific follow-up to ones that you think are great opportunities. But all those other leads are lost. Mm -hmm. And um, so you put in all that effort at the show to get all of those contacts and now 99% of them are just in the wind. Right. You know, and, and right. so um, it's frustrating when, you know, we see people that don't have CRMs because I look at those lead lists, especially, and the communication that maybe you've had with a prospect mm -hmm. has a bunch of intelligence and data that our company needs, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they're all opportunities for growing our company and, and seeing a higher ROI on mm -hmm. the trade show if we can act on those more than just one email that we right. send. So, you know, the CRM is, is kind of that central source of truth that I think every company has to have mm -hmm. in some way so that... Um, you know, the data is always up to date. The conversations are always front and center. So mm -hmm. I can see what conversations, you know, another salesperson is having with a mm -hmm. prospect. Um, and then also depending on your marketing systems, you know, if, if it's integrated with your CRM, then, um, you know, you've got a lot of nice tools you can mm -hmm. use as well, whether that's automating emails or, um, you know, doing some deliberate social work, mm -hmm. uh, whatever the case may be. So just, yeah. I can't emphasize enough that yeah. CRM makes life a lot easier. Right. And I think talking about marketing too, something that always kind of sucks for us when we get a new client and maybe they want trade show support or even a client we've had for years, but maybe they're not using the CRM as much as they should. And they say, you know, we want a trade show strategy. We just talked about one of the main things to do is, okay, what did you do in the past? How did that work? 
oh, you don't know? Like, what did your good <laughs> right, leads right. look like? How many, like, how can we set our goals? Like, so you got 50 years last year. Oh, you don't know how many leads you got from last year's show. We don't know how to reach out to them. They're just gone. Right. So maybe they were followed up with at the time, but there's no way to even gauge future success or start to build a future strategy when right. when you're not capturing anything from the marketing side of things as well. Right, and, and the CRM lets you close the loop as well to say, mm -hmm. you know, maybe our first touch point with Mr. Prospect was at a trade show two mm -hmm. years ago, and now finally they're a customer. You know, but if if the salesperson from two years ago is gone, mm -hmm. you know, you have no way of closing the loop to say, yeah, all right, maybe it's two years later, right. but we're seeing a return on this trade right. show that we went to. So right. without a CRM, it's really difficult to do that. Definitely. So our main takeaways, kind of, you have to stand out is is number one. Yeah, there's too much noise at a trade show to kind of fit in and be in the sea of dudes and khakis and polos. <laughs> you know, you've got to do something to be right. different and cut through the noise. Right. Um, you have to be able to plan way ahead mm -hmm. of time. So uh, I like to say you should be at the very latest eight weeks before the show, be doing pre-show uh, promotion. So mm -hmm. at least eight weeks before, which means your planning needs to happen at least probably six weeks before that. Right. So um, give yourself enough time to really plan. That would be one mm -hmm. of my biggest tips. And planning your post uh, show stuff is every bit as important as your pre-show promotion because when you get back, there's that tidal wave of crap you missed while yeah, you were gone. Absolutely. You, know, and you don't want to you don't want to screw up when it comes to following up with the leads. Yep. How about you? That's huge, I think. And then also, um, I think not making it too hard on yourself. So definitely don't slave away at your computer thinking of 100 different emails for every single lead. Find a balance between what you can automate and write in advance. Like we said, we have some templates that we'll link below. We also have a full email trade show guide and a full trade show guide for right. like start to finish promotion and at the booth. So utilize things like that kind of lean on resources and lean on automation when you can, when right. it makes sense to, to, to help yourself out. So you're not getting so, you know, overwhelmed with everything that you end up following up with no one, yeah. which unfortunately we've seen before. Yeah, all, all too often. Yeah. But I think to your point with the uh, automation, remember to be human, which you can, Absolutely. Still, you can still do with, yeah. with automated and sequenced emails. Mm -hmm. You can still use humor and you know, try and make a personal connection. Yeah. A really great tip for that too, that I was just chatting about um, the other day was someone was like, okay, well, what if I just, I don't have a great way to log it. I haven't convinced the higher ups of a CRM yet, but I really love the idea of using something personal. Um, you don't necessarily have to remember everything about everyone. You can fake a little bit of personalization too. And this is going to sound a little grimy, but I promise it'll work. So go to the trade show and maybe like, I know our coworker, Josh always talks about tacos. Mm -hmm. So he'd be okay to send an automated email in advance. If he knows that no matter what he's working tacos into the conversation, he can say in his email that he sends to 30 people and didn't even change. Like, Hey, I was the guy who talked to you about tacos. Right. Right. That's a great. Great and they're going to think it was really personal, but Josh is talking to everyone about tacos. So maybe right. you always talk about your dog or your twins or whatever it may be. Yep. Yep. And sorry, Josh, if you've used that one before and I just <laughs> <laughs> threw you under the bus, right. but yeah, no, I don't that, think he has. <laughs> that, that is a great point. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and don't forget to take a look at those guides. I think that they're going to be really useful. Um, and so we'll see you next time. Awesome. Thanks.